Hey guys, my name is Michel and this is my first English tutorial on Photoshop CS6. I really try that you're going to understand what I'm saying because English is not my native language, but hey, I'll try my best, okay? Well, in this first tutorial, I'd like to show you how you can convert this regular photograph into something that looks like if it had its origin in a comic book or comic movie or something like that, which is a pretty nice effect, I think. Well, we have to start with duplicating our layer. That's always the first step when I try to play with different filters and blend modes and effects. And the reason why I'm duplicating my layer is you should always have the original layer as a background layer or it doesn't have to be a background layer but just the original layer as a backup you never know what happens and this way you can always revert your work okay so we duplicate our layer with command j or control j on windows and my first step here after duplicating the layer is I convert this layer one into a smart object because smart objects allow you to reapply or re-edit every or almost every filter you have applied and well it's pretty nice to be able to edit filters after the fact because you never know if filters or amounts that you have dialed in are appropriate and perfect after the first attempt. So to convert this layer one into a smart object, that's pretty easy. Just right click somewhere over here and choose convert to smart object. Now that we have the smart object, we can apply our first filter, which is located over here, filter, blur, and we just choose the old regular Gaussian blur. And uh, in this case, and I think in most cases a radius between 10 and 20 pixel works quite fine as a first attempt, the first approach. So I'll stick with 15 pixels and I click OK. OK, so this effect here is not very exciting, it's just a blurred copy of the original layer, but that's actually gonna change as soon as we play with the different blend modes. Well, there's different blend modes you could choose from, maybe overlay, but overlay just gives you a saturated, glowy, shiny look, which is quite nice for portrait effects, maybe. But in our case, we'll choose the divide blend mode, which gives us some nice strokes and outlines here. It's a good basement for what we try to do later on. But we don't need those strokes here in color, we need to get rid of them. So we choose a command that actually desaturates the colors, but we don't choose the desaturate command, we don't choose who saturation. I always prefer the black and white command, because the black and white command has this nice targeted adjustment tool. Well, uh, hue saturation also has this one, but well, I prefer black and white which allows you to just click on those gray strokes and move the cursor to the left to darken the strokes or right to lighten those strokes. And this way you can tweak the final effect. And I'll try to darken the strokes just a little bit in order to achieve this edgy high contrast look here. Well, looks quite nice. So now comes the final trick, which is very important. Now we duplicate our blurred copy once again with command J and move this layer copy to the top here. It has to be our first and topmost layer. And now the blend mode, the divide mode doesn't work anymore. We need something else. And the good news is you can actually try between a myriad of different blend modes and they all have a distinct and very nice look. Not all, but most of them. So, for example, if you choose the multiply blend mode, ah, oh, that works pretty nice because we have these dark lines over here and it looks like painted or drawn or whatever, but you don't have to choose this one, okay? So, here's a neat little trick actually. If you don't know which blend mode to apply, there's a shortcut that helps you to switch between those different blend modes. And that's pretty easy. 
Uh, you can choose most of those tools here, but I always stick with the first one with the move tool. And if you hit the shift and the plus and minus key, plus or minus, you can switch between those different blend modes. So shift plus actually switches to the next mode and shift minus takes the previous one. And as you can see here, linear burn is also quite nice. Let's choose another one, shift plus. Nope, that's nothing for us. Let's continue. Yeah, maybe uh, hard light. And so you can try different ones. Ah, oh, linear light, not bad also. But I think I'll stick with the first blend mode I chose, which was multiply, because that gives us a pretty dark, sinister look here. Yeah, not bad. Okay, so as a final step, I think the whole picture appears to be a bit dark, actually. So what I try to do is uh, I'll hit Command, Alt, Shift and the E key, which gives us a new master copy. And now we can disable those eyeballs down here because this is our new master layer. And I also convert this one here into a smart object, convert to smart object. And I'll choose the uh, image adjustment uh, shadow highlight command, which actually works perfect with smart object. And now I just choose a low amount of 6% maybe in a tonal width of 25% uh, and the radius of 40% should be nice. So in order to disable the preview, we can actually just hit the P key, which gives you a nice preview. And I think 6% is too much. Uh, I'll choose 3%. Yeah, that's perfect. And as a final touch, uh, I'll choose a new adjustment layer that we have here within Photoshop CS6. I'll uh, work with the uh, public beta of Photoshop CS6 here. And uh, I'll choose the color lookup adjustment layer, which is a perfect, very nice new kind of adjustment layers. I'll use that quite often in the future. So let me choose this one here. And well, you got to play around with those different effects because they are all very, very nice. So what I try to do here is I just choose the 3D LUT file and I'll change the effect to three strip look here. Or we could also choose the candlelight or crisp form effect. No, that's too dark. Candlelight, no. Well, I'll stick with the three strip look. And look, that looks quite nice. So if we uh, just disable all those other eyeballs and that was the original one and that's what we made. Well, you could hold down the option key and just click on the background layer that shows you the initial one and alt click again that shows you what we have achieved so far. Okay, so I hope you liked this tutorial and if you want me to do some more tutorials, just send me an email. Okay, see you soon. Bye-bye.